Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the 2019 Mountain Valley News North Jackson Press Football Preview. Today we have Coach Matt Putnam of the Sylvania Rams in the studio with us and uh, we're going to ask him a few questions and get his outlook on the season. And Coach, we, we always start every show uh, just kind of a get to know you as a coach. Uh, you're going into your fifth year at Sylvania, so I'm sure everybody up there pretty much, and you're a Sylvania guy, so I'm sure oh, yeah. everybody knows you anyway. But uh, just for those who maybe don't have the, 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 the football knowledge, uh, talk a little bit about your philosophy, uh, offensive philosophy and defensive philosophies as a coach. Mm, well, offensively, I, it's all about uh, eliminating mistakes and, uh, and just making sure you don't beat yourself. You know, you, you've got to – you can't have stupid penalties. You can't you can't turn the ball over. You know the kids just need to know what they're doing. Uh, to me, it doesn't really doesn't really matter how uh, elaborate or fancy your offense or deep, or offense is. If you if you're not putting points on the board and you're making too right. many mistakes, it's it's not going to work. Talk about what y'all do offensively or what you try to do. I know a lot of times <laughs> uh, that's the that's the big difference for coaches what they want to do and what they can do. And we were talking of. A little bit about that before the show, you right. know, you have to play the cards you're dealt. Right, but, uh, and that's one of the biggest things is trying to fit uh, the kids you have to your offensive philosophy. You know, a lot of college guys and NFL guys, they get to go get players to fit right. their systems, right. and you got to fit your system to your players as a high You're a run-first guy. Yeah, we are. We but, uh, but you guys throw the football around too some. We and, have and had success doing that. And I, that always depends on the guy you've got throwing it and the guy you've got catching it. So yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're you blessed with those guys that can do that, then it kind of opens things up a little bit more. Defensively, uh, you know, we hear everything. I've had guys in here, you know, some people you hear the bend but don't break uh, right. philosophy. And then uh, other guys are like, you know, attack, attack, attack. What, what's your approach defensively? Well, it's kind of the same thing. You know, if, if, we, if we've got big defensive linemen and, and we can kind of squeeze and control the line of scrimmage, then we're going to be in but don't break, you know, make you drive the length of the field. But if you're a little bit smaller and, and you can't stand up, and, right. then you got to go get them. So it just kind of all depends on what you got. You know, you try right. to put your best 11 on the field. And um, your philosophy ought to revolve around those guys. Right, right. Build around what you got. Right. Uh, last season, you know, I've talked with uh, Coach Pruitt, uh, Coach Ledbetter. It, it was kind of a crazy year, especially down the stretch there. It of course, was. Geraldine, and, and, and I will talk about a little bit. I want to get into that. The, I think you guys surprised a lot of people. The <laughs> Geraldine game turned into a war last year. It did. It's a good of course, game. I'm having to broadcast. I'm on the radio doing plain news games, but I'm hearing, uh, I'm getting reports, and I'm like, man, that's what I just knew. That's one of those games I wanted to, I wished I could see because right. it was just, right. just hearing about it. But uh, uh, 2021, uh, close, close, hard fought ball game. Uh, and again, coming down the stretch, Geraldine ultimately won, uh, and Susan Moore, it came down to Geraldine, Susan Moore sitting there at the top, a very interesting three-way uh, deal between, right. and of course I know you don't like the way that, that, that turned out, that's as they, how the cookie crumbles as right. they say, but, right. but my goodness, how competitive, and, 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 and I talked about this a lot with uh, Monk here around the studio uh, last year. And it wasn't just in Region 7, but I saw so many teams that, I mean, you could tell these teams are talented. They had good athletes. And their records just didn't really reflect it. There were right. so many good teams last year that had like, Six and five, you yeah. know, six and four, five mm -hmm. and five, those kinds of teams. Right. A lot of them, not again, not just in Region Seven, but talk a little bit about that last year. How you know that was it was just a, a horse race down the end like that. And what what is your team's takeaway, or, or what is your takeaway as a coach primarily from last season and how it played out? Well, to begin with, you know that we play especially in this part of the state. Um, a lot of teams are well coached and they, they're well prepared. You know, Absolutely. Everybody lifts, Very competitive. lifts 12 months a year and, and they get after it and the coaches are sound in what they do and, and you've got to prepare every week or you're going to get beat. 
Uh, yeah. So uh, that's a testament to them. Uh, for us, it was just a matter of some key losses and some injuries that we had to overcome. And right. we, we were just really young. We had a freshman quarterback. You know, we had a lot of sophomores on the offensive line. We were just we were a really really young team. So we had to learn how to win and and kind of get some confidence. And you know, we started off with uh, I think we were one and four starting off the year, and then mm -hmm. ended up picking up a little steam. But I. I told my coaches, I told my players that I felt like the team that played Geraldine week nine would have beat uh, the team that, that got beat by Susan Moore week two. If we could have played ourselves, we would have beat right. ourselves by four touchdowns. Just, and that was just a testament to them working and not giving up and, and continue to push and, and be winners. You know? Well, and too, like I said, I know coming down the stretch there by the, about the tenth week, you know, I, yeah. I think a lot of people around here had the feeling that they, we caught Sylvania on the one correct night. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I would I would have hated to line up and played them again because you guys really did. You put it together there toward the end, and, and like I said, that Geraldine game that was that was one for the ages. Yeah, we, um, we lost three region games by twelve points last year. But you oh, know, you so. talked about you talked about injuries, and you know that's the. That's the Achilles heel you hear a lot of coaches talk about, uh, the injury bug bites, and that can just totally, you know, Plainview goes into uh, Collinsville last year, loses their starting running back three right. plays in, and that just changes your entire season, yeah, changes, what you have yeah. to do. But uh, besides injuries, uh, talk about graduation losses on, off on the offensive side and the defensive okay. side, and, uh, and then uh, a little bit about maybe – You've seen some guys step up to fill those holes. Yeah, we have. You know, last year was a was a good senior class. Um, we lost uh, some guys. We lost Winston Wilkes, who's a three year starter. He played center, he played tackle, and he played tight end last year. So he's he's been kind of tough to to uh, replace. Um, you know, there's just a lot of guys. You know, last year we played a ton of people. We only had four juniors last year. We've only got four seniors this year. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the guys backups last year were our sophomores and freshmen and um, you know that's what our philosophy early was we're young we don't we're, we just got to play everybody right so my coaching staff did a great job of, of rotating young guys in and everybody got experience I think we we're returning 14 uh, sophomores that started from last year and mm -hmm. three freshmen that at some point in the season you know got a lot so we got a lot of guys that have that got experience last year that are that are really going to help us this year. More losses on the offensive side or the defensive side? Uh, we had uh, one offensive lineman, um, a tight end, uh, a wing back, and a fullback on offense that, that we lost. Okay. And then about the same the same guy because, you know, right. when you're playing Play three, both eight, ways, you're, yeah. you're losing them on both sides. That's so. right. That's right. Uh, talk a little bit about spring practice. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel that your spring went? Uh, what did you – what did you want to see, and what did you see? <laughs> well, the, you know, spring is always about question marks and trying right. to answer questions. And uh, what, the way we do stuff is we have a line, and we say anybody that's above the line plays on Friday night. Mm -hmm. If you're below the line, you don't. Yeah. And then so we just tell our kids that your job is to get above the line. So those are the question marks we want to answer, and, and spring training went great, and we got a lot of kids that are above the line that probably more than we've had in a while. Yeah. So and did y'all? Oh, I'm sure you did. You played spring. We did. We went down to Valley Head. Valley and played, Head. Uh, Valley I was Head thinking y'all were. Section. Yeah. Uh, summer workouts. You know, of course, it's year-round sport now. You know, you right. kids are in the weight room all the time. Uh, headed into fall camp. How do you feel about where your team is at? Uh, obviously, getting all those young kids last year, a lot of experience. You probably right. feel like you're more prepared in that area and yes and, and obviously when kids know what to do without having to think about it first right. makes them a step quicker right so. well i mean the, you know the, like you said the weight room is always important and our kids have been busting their tail since the season ended and um got a lot stronger and uh, you know we should we should be better because of it right uh want to look ahead to the 2019 season we always do this we'll go down I'm just going to – are you guys going to open up with Scottsboro again? We are. We got them at home. It's a jamboree. Oh, jamboree game. Okay. Uh, 
obviously that's a good test. I believe they're 5A. They are. So they kind of throw them to the wolves right <laughs> at the outset. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we won't, we won't dwell on that because that's a jamboree game. Then you guys uh, go down to Sardis, open up on the road. And that's not a region game, but uh, talk about them. Who is the coach down there now? Uh, coach Hill, Gene Hill. What do you know about Sardis? Oh, Sardis, you know, they've been growing leaps and bounds. They're a 5A now, too, I do believe. And they're probably pushing 6A. But they, uh, they, they always are big and they're always physical. And they've got skilled guys. And it's a, it's a good game for us. You know, like we've played them the last four years, and we've split with them. We've got two, and they've got two. So this is a... It's a good game, good to start off with, and uh, two five A schools well, they're right out of the gate. That is, that's that's a way to that's a way to test them. And then Susan Moore again last year, Susan Moore, and I don't yeah. know Susan Moore is is in our area, but they're out of our coverage area. Right. Other than when they, you know, I don't really know anything about them. We've not interviewed their coach. I don't know about losses or what they have coming back. But uh, you probably know more about that than I do. What, oh, what do you expect out of that? You know, they were a physical team too last year. Of course, like I said, you know, the, the coach does a good job of. Uh, and you've of got them at kids home. Prepared. Um, you know, last year it was a, a seven-point game. We lost 28-21, and we had opportunities. We just we just couldn't get the ball in the end zone when we needed to. I think right. we got inside the the red zone two or three times and, and just got no points out of it. Just uh, mistakes and right. being young, but. You know, um, I think they lost their running back and got their quarterback back, or they lost their quarterback and got the running back back. So they ran a little bit of zone read, a little option game out of it, and, and those two were a, were a good duo. So I don't, I don't know what they're going to fit in that spot they lost, but but they'll be, I mean, they'll be pretty good again. Well, that's uh, that's your region opener, and again, you get you get them at home, so that's got to be good opening up region play at home, and then you're at home again the next week, Gaston. Uh, now they're just are they two A? They're two A. Two A. Uh, they got a new coach this year. I'm not sure who they hired. Um, so I don't really know what to expect from them. We we'll have to wait and see. Okay, and then Plainview. Don't have to say anything about Sylvania and Plainview. You guys come up to Plainview this year, and we do. I, I imagine your kids are hungry. Uh, yeah. I would imagine, especially the way they played down the stretch, they feel like that's one they left yeah. on the field that they. I think so. I think a lot should of be the, motivated. Yeah, you know, our kids, Coach Ledbetter, you know, was with us for for, for, for three years, and um, but you know, our kids love him. And then Coach Clements was with us too. So those two guys left, and, and our kids had a lot of respect for them. And I think the mental part of the game got us before we even started. You know, mm -hmm. a little bit competing against those two guys really got in our heads. And I believe this year that I don't, I don't think that'll be an issue this year. Uh, well, you know, it's Plainview and Sylvania, and I think most people would say if it, it's Plainview and Sylvania, if that's not enough motivation, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you don't really need any other motivation It'll beyond be a good that. Game. It'll be a good uh, game. North Sand Mountain, not a region game. Got them at home, outstanding quarterback. Yeah, he does a really good job. He's elusive. He's hard to, hard to him up. And um, I do believe they lost a few of their receivers, but they'll be back. They'll be back strong. So that'll be a tough, tough challenge again. And then uh, also at home, back in region play, Brindley Mountain. Brindley Mountain hasn't been competitive uh, last few years. How is it? How is a coach? You know, a lot of people say, well, how do you prepare your team to go play a Fife or somebody like that? I bet it's just as frustrating because you see a little bit of a lax attitude in practice if it's Brindley Mountain Week. How, how do you as a coach, you know, try to keep a lid on that and keep the kids uh, focused? Well, for, for me, you know, we always talk about it's not who we play, it's how we play. Right. So we try not to focus on our opponent as much as we do ourselves. You know, I, my philosophy to the kids, and, and most of them buy into it and believe it, that Nobody can beat us but us. Right. You know, so if we don't make mistakes and we do what we're supposed to do, then the scoreboard takes care of itself. Well, now, then next week you have to travel down to New Hope. New Hope is one of those teams that has struggled. Uh, if you just look at W's and L's, they've struggled some over the last couple of years, but they're also a team that can 
on any given night, they can shock Absolutely. you. Absolutely. They usually have athletes down there. I think they've had some trouble with consistency in their program. Right. Had a lot of coaching changes, but uh, uh, that that's uh, that's a region game, and, and Plainview found that out last year more right. than anybody. We were worried and, sick about it going into that game last well, year. Well, they they gave Plainview all they wanted, and uh, and I I can't remember. I think they played Pisgah really close at they least did. for two or three quarters. They did. Um, what do you what do you expect out of them? I guess it's hard to know because they've got another new coach. Another coming new coach. In. I know that they were the biggest team we played last year out of everybody. They were they were huge. They had three or four guys that were that were three fifty plus, and um, I think they lost those guys. But they were they were a massive massive team. Right, right. And they've always got big boys. And uh, Pisgah, and you've got Pisgah at home this year. I imagine you're glad of that, Coach Pruitt. Uh, coming into his second year, and uh, they they had an impressive showing again last year too. And again, that little triangle of Plainview, Sylvania, and Pisgah last year was right. a, a dogfight right, right at the end. They're going to come in ready to play, knowing what to expect from you guys. How do you how do you prepare for that? We know Coach will be in his second year, and the second year for his offense and defense. So the kids will be they'll be better because right. of it. Um, I know he had a big senior class last year. They had 13 or 14 guys that graduated. I'm not sure, you know, how he's replacing those, but I, there's a lot of excitement at Pisgah right now, and uh, Coach has done a good job. Uh, by that time of the year, you've usually got enough film on people that you yeah. kind of got them, you know, not figured out completely, but you got an idea of what they're, what they're about and what they're going to do. So uh, it, it'd just be a matter of what are they doing now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now we're down to this is the one. That I, I want you to elaborate a little bit on this. On this, uh, Geraldine, uh, and you got to go down to Geraldine this year, so that's, that's going to be tough. We do talk about that game last year because everybody <laughs> that I know was shocked. I mean, that well, you know, for, for us, we, we put a game plan in based on what we think we can attack and exploit, right? And you know, our kids had improved. Our quarterback, had, I think he threw four or five interceptions the first two or three games, and mm -hmm. he didn't throw another one. So he, he progressively got better. Uh, Grant Ashley came out last year uh, for the first time since he's in eighth grade. He's a, a big basketball player, one of our better athletes, and a great competitor. And he'd improved a lot. So, you know, we just tried to we tried to keep it out of the teeth of their defense, which was their strong point, and our sophomore offense line. We just tried to make sure we got the ball on the edges and threw the ball around right. a little bit. And it was a rainy night, and the ball was a little slippery. But you yep. know, Brody did a great job throwing it, and Grant did a great job catching it. And we just could just hung in there and had a chance at the end. Well, that was definitely. I I'm guessing I can't remember, but I believe that was game of the week. Uh, it was game of the week in my book, anyway. Okay. <laughs> So this year, and I don't know, I, I know they lost the running back, uh, Andrew Hall, to graduation. Uh, not sure, of course, they used several running backs. Oh, they're talented. They uh, don't guys. know who all they have coming back, but I believe their quarterback, he didn't graduate, did he? I don't think so. Okay. No, I don't think so so uh, I, I can imagine that will, I would say Sylvania and Geraldine will be one of the better football games again this year. Because uh, both both schools play physical, you guys right. are very physical. Right. Uh, Geraldine's always physical, and um, I, that that'd be a that'd be a hot ticket uh, there, uh, second to the last week of the season. And then, got to go to Fife. Don't yeah. have to say gotta anything about Fife. Field. He does a great job. They'll be well prepared. They'll be big and strong, and physical like they always are. Now, of course, I, I, I interviewed Coach uh, Benefil. He, I think he was the very first one we did in this series. And, you know, they just hardly ever throw the football, but they create a lot. They've always got speed, and they create a lot of confusion. You right. never know who's going to come out of the backfield with the ball right. or which way they're coming. And they play with so much discipline. Um, I think that's very important at the high school level, you know, and when you're playing a team like Fife, I would imagine you really preach that. Of course, I'm sure you preach it all the time, but right. especially with a team like Fife, you have to be – it's not always about being 
necessarily the strongest guy, but you have to be where you're supposed to be. Right. And at if all you're not, times. then coach makes you pay for it. Exactly. And he does a good job of that. So. And of course, you you played for him, didn't you? I did. I was thinking. I did. Long time there's ago. a lot of branches to that Paul Benefield coaching tree. It's, yeah, you know, it seems to be growing. You know, it's kind of like the Nick Saban tree throughout the SEC. It's <laughs> gr growing throughout uh, DeKalb County in Region Seven. Yep. Well, uh, Coach, we always end these interviews with just like a general question. You're headed into your fifth year, and this, I guess this is sort of a get-to-know-you type question. You're heading into your fifth year as head coach at Sylvania. What, what is your biggest challenge, or what have you seen as your biggest challenge as a head coach? Uh, well, you know, I was, I was somewhere else for five years before I came here, and the biggest challenge nowadays is just getting kids to commit. Right. Getting them to come out. We hear that a lot. Even when it's bad, you know, when it's great, everybody wants to be a part of it. But like last year, you know, when you're when you're not winning, you're close and you're getting beat up a little bit, then that, your true character comes out when it's hard. And that's the beautiful thing about football is it really teaches you how to get up. Now, where were you for Sylvania? I was at Hazel Green. Hazel Green. You yeah. were head coach over there for? Five years. Five years. That was your first head coach. That was my job. first head coach. Okay. Job. Yeah. Big difference between being the head guy and the assistant guy, right? There is a big difference. You know, a lot you of have to do this kind of stuff. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we I, we've heard that from so many of the coaches. You know, we we live in this instant gratification society, and there are so many things now for kids to be involved in. Right. And you know, a lot of times they take the path of least resistance. But if you take the path of least resistance, the payoff's not as right. good. Right, yeah. Well, what, what I always need is, is I need parents, and most coaching teams are the same thing, is this a partnership between you and parents. Is if I'm right. tough on him, don't let him quit. Bring him back up there, you know, make him come again, because it'll get better. You know, it'll always right. get worse, but it'll also get better. Right. So just, just see it through. and. And, uh, I had uh, I had a lot of coaches, and uh, they talked to me pretty rough. But I never had a coach that I didn't think loved me, right? Or cared about me, or how I turned out. Right. So, anyway, well, listen, that's going to do it for this edition of the uh, 2019 Mountain Valley News North Jackson Press football preview show. And uh, Matt Putnam, head coach of the Sylvania Rams, want to thank you for coming in. Wish you all the best. Appreciate Good luck it. this season. And uh, stay tuned. I think we've still got two or three coaches to talk to, so uh, we'll be bringing that to you uh, a little later. Building your dream home is one of the great joys in life. At First Southern State Bank, we know construction and mortgage financing, putting today's low rates to work for you. As you and your family move closer to the completion of your new home, we know that your home is where memories are made and families grow stronger year after year. At First Southern State Bank in Rainsville, Scott Kirk stands ready to tailor the right construction loans to meet your needs. Along with our staff of experienced loan professionals. Drop by to share your dreams with us today in Rainsville. First Southern State Bank in Rainsville. All the bank you'll ever need. Folks, this is Andy White down here at Bobby Ledbetter's Twin City in Fort Payne, Alabama. I want to invite everybody to come out to our new location. We're at 1411 Glen Boulevard, right where you turn to go on Airport Road. We've got plenty of inventory for you to choose from. i got cars, trucks, vans, sport utility vehicles of any make and model. Come down here and visit us. Let us see what we can do for you. If you got some slow credit, I've got some banks that will take care of that. We've got great financing. We've got a great selection of cars. Y'all come down here and see us. Don't take the first deal that comes along when you can do better at BobbyLedbetter.com and Twin City Used Car Sales, located at 1411 Glen Boulevard in South Fort Payne.